what are the neurological mechanisms that make some leaders more responsible than others? How do their brains behave? Isari has launched a pioneering research project to unravel the neurological mechanisms behind good leadership. Isari researchers are mapping the brains of 160 MBA students while they solve business cases and come up with ethical solutions to problems. It was very interesting. First we had a few exercises to see um, how the electrodes work, if you were listening correctly, if everything was functioning. And then we did a team exercise on corporate social responsibility about uh, Levi's company and to see what would be our conclusion, our main recommendation for this company overall. Isadi is the world's first business school to use high-tech neuroscience for this purpose. Isadi's neuroscience and leadership project is a joint initiative with Arizona State University. The project's final goal is to gain deeper insight into leadership and so help in shaping a better world. We have really an exploratory state that we are currently in where we look what is happening in fact in the brain when um, a moral imaginative um, solution is produced. We have um, certain hypotheses about it, for instance that empathy plays an important role in actually um, achieving these kind of solutions and they will uh, be situated in a certain part of the brain and we will look into what parts of the brain are in fact activated in those people that contribute to developing those higher level um, solutions. This is very new still and so it's still somewhat experimental and I'm, I'm glad that Asadi is coming on board with what we're doing. I mean, we're showing some good results. I think the risk is not all that great that we're going to find something because, uh, as I said, the, the, the science is already there and it's being applied in other areas. And now the time is to bring it into management and to organizational issues, we think. And hopefully uh, uh, us, along with our partners here at Asadi and maybe a few other schools, will be the leaders in that regard instead of the followers. We're going to track the brain waves of students while they are doing this and we see how they interact with each other. For example, is there a group discussion leader emerging? And what happens in the minds of the so-called followers, that is the others on the table, once this person speaks up? This is you know, one of the many items that we look into. So it's a very fascinating study for us. Uh. Signals, um, the little boxes that they're wearing on their head, in there is an amplifier, so it makes the signal bigger because the brain's electrical activity is quite small. And then we digitize it, and then once it's digitized, it's sent via Bluetooth to the laptop. On the laptop is running our algorithms. What our algorithms do is essentially um, pull out all of the brain activity and eliminate anything that's an artifact. So you can have artifacts from muscles, which also have big biopotentials. You can have artifacts from the environment. So we automatically screen all of those, drop those out, and just retain the brain activity. By learning this, then we can figure out what a norm of good, effective teamwork for a top management team would be, and then, you know, in the next cycle of this research would be to try to implement how to improve group processes in top management teams that are global around the world. The goal is to see uh, how people really behave in a team setting and to see if uh, the team setting and the discussions that they have in a team would really create certain different kinds of brain waves. And then would we be able to study those brain waves and see whether some people behave differently than others? And would it be possible to actually improve behavior in these settings? The idea, of course, is to study uh, visionary and charismatic leadership and what would differentiate some leaders from others.